see. Um, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So a 45-year-old woman with a history of recurring kidney stones presents with fatigue, muscle weakness, and polyuria. Laboratory tests reveal a potassium of 2.9, bicarbonate of 15, and a normal anion gap. The blood gas analysis show a pH of 7.32 and a partial um, carbon dioxide of 28. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Um, so we know that she's in an acidotic state, and we know that she also has a normal anion. Um, right off the bat, I know that it can't be diabetic ketoacidosis, right? Um, yeah. Barter syndrome works at the beginning of the nephron, and I don't think it has those symptoms of like polyuria and all that. Um, respiratory alkalosis as well, no. So I'm between proximal renal and distal renal. Um, so recurring kidney stones. I'm going to go with proximal. No. So so it's good that you got it between these two, right? Because these are going to both be uh, non-anion gap, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for proximal, it's usually impaired bicarb reabsorption in the proximal, leading to bicarb wasting, metabolic acidosis. But it's going to have like Fanconi syndrome, which doesn't cause hypokalemia or recurrent kidney stones. So the key here is actually the hypokalemia and kidney stones, which is going to be more of kind of a distal renal tubule acidosis. Okay, mm -hmm. so the both of these stones. will be non anion gap. Just, just uh, be careful about the um, the electrolytes. Is what I'll say. Gotcha. All right. All so, right. so this is correct because they're both a uh, normal anion gap. Okay, so they like asking about that. All right, but proximal renal tubule acidosis is usually deal with like Fanconi syndrome. So you're gonna have other you know physical manifestations too.